Morning Year 10. So this is your first introductory video to explain the tasks for you going forward. So whatever work you have or haven't done up until this point, you don't need to worry about going backwards. You just need to concentrate on the task that I'm setting you each week going forwards from here. OK, I'm Miss Hoppington. I know you've not had a chance to meet me yet. Um, obviously, it's a little bit of a strange scenario. Some of you I might have spoken to over the phone. Um, but if you need to contact me at any point, you can email me or ring into school and then I can call you back. So I'm just going to go through the PowerPoint slides now that I'll be setting you on show my homework this week. Um, I think the homework will be set, obviously, on Sunday. Um, this video might be added a little bit later on. So um, PowerPoint then. So on the 1st of June, now I know we're a little bit past the 1st of June, but on the 1st of June, the exam board released the context for your coursework, okay, for your non-examined assessment. So unlike the work that we've been doing so far, you will notice in one of my emails, I did say that this work going forward will actually go towards your final GCSE grade at the end of year 11. So it's worth 50%. So it is absolutely extremely important that you keep up to date with this work. I'm not going to set a huge amount of it. There is just going to be one task each week to do. Um, it shouldn't take you that long to do each week, but you cannot afford to fall behind with it, okay? If you fall behind at this point, then we're going to be struggling to catch up because we don't know when we are going to be in, back in school full time. So um, your NEA then. So the NEA stands for non-examined assessment, which is basically coursework. I've already said it's worth 50%. The other 50% will come from your exam. So the coursework itself, um, you are given three contextual challenges to choose from. So basically, you will have a look on one of these slides at the three challenges. You can choose which one you do for your coursework. Now, what I'm going to be asking you to do to begin with is look at two of them in more detail in order to help you decide. So the work for this coursework is split into different strands. So um, for instance, strand one will be introduction, uh, investigating the context. So each strand has got different sections of work within it, but I'll explain that a little bit later on. OK, so that's pretty much what I've just said to you on this slide. So um, in section one, then, so section one is called Explore and it's A01. So this includes the following different things. So that's the strand explore. These are the sections that are within it. So we've got investigations of the context, design brief, um, investigations of user and stakeholder needs, investigations of existing products, explorations of materials and technical specifications. Now you don't need to worry about all of them for the time being, you are literally just concentrating on the first one. So we're gonna go through the first one together um, at a pace that, that should hopefully suit everybody. Um, so, presentation and submission of this work. Now, usually we would submit this in a digital format. So that would mean everybody saving it on a computer um, takes the form of a PowerPoint presentation because it has to include things like videos, um, interview recordings, stuff like that. And then we will submit it to the exam board via a memory stick. Now, at the moment, obviously, some people don't have access to computers or internet, so it can be done on paper. However, you need to be taking photographs and keeping the work safe because we'll need to scan it onto the PowerPoints when we do those once we're back at school. OK, and um, if you can start creating a PowerPoint now, that's great because we can just alter and edit the bits that we need to. But if not, don't worry about it. You can do absolutely everything on paper, take photographs or scan it in. Um, I will tell you about a good app that you can get on your phone for scanning in if you don't have a scanner at home as well. OK, um, so you need to make sure that you send me something okay so even if it is just a picture of what you've done i need to see that you've done it because part of this coursework is we've got to know that it's authentic and that, that you've done it yourself okay so that relates to this slide so need to make sure that you've done it yourself and i need to see something each week so that i'm aware that at what stage you're at and that you are doing the work on a weekly basis okay if we suddenly get back to school and you've just got all the work there done and i've never seen any of it then i've got no idea whether you've done it yourself um it might be a little bit questionable so i need to see it as we're going along okay 
Um, this project will also require you to identify a user. So basically the person that you are going to design a product for, it has to be a real person that you've got regular contact with or can have regular contact with. It can be over the phone. It doesn't have to be face to face, obviously, specifically in these circumstances. Um, but it does need to be a real person. You can't make them up. You can't say, oh, I'm making it for a 13 year old boy called whatever who lives in so and so place. It must be based on a real person so that you can speak to them and get their opinions about everything. OK. So for every single task that you do, I will give you an example and a video like this one to explain what you're doing, because sometimes it's quite difficult to put down um, on a slide and it might not be very easy to understand. So if you need any additional help after that or anything else explained a little bit better, then you need to contact me rather than falling behind. Don't just ignore it and think, well, I'm not sure what to do, so I'm just going to leave it. It's vitally important because obviously, like I've said, it goes towards your real GCSE that you keep up to date with the work each week. OK, so you can email me and my email link is there. So if you click on that link on the PowerPoint, then it will go straight to your email. Um, or if you prefer to contact me by phone or you can't email for any reason, then you can ring the school number on 01246 822 105. Um, leave a message that you need me to call back and then I will ring you at a time that's convenient to you and to me, okay? I will be keeping a tracking sheet in order to make sure that I know who has done what, okay? I would do this if we were in the classroom as well, but I need to make sure that I know people have either done or haven't done or need to finish a bit. Um, whatever the case may be, I need to know what position people are in as we go along. So um, the premise then for this coursework is something called iterative design so the NEA coursework uses an iterative design approach which basically means that rather than you doing some research coming up with a product developing it and making it for the person it's a bit more of a cylindrical approach so you are constantly developing a product and um, going back to your user the real person that I mentioned that you're making the product for getting their opinion on it finding out what you could do to make it better, what needs changing, whether you could add anything, and then going back to them to show them an improved version. And it carries on and on like that until you get to a product that meets their needs fully. Okay, so that is what we mean by iterative design. Chronological order means that your folder or your work needs to be presented in the way that you did it. So if you are in the middle of doing your design ideas and you suddenly have a different idea that relates to research, Put it in. It doesn't matter if it's out of order. It needs to be in the order that you actually thought of it and the order that you did it. OK, so designing for a, pro a product for a client can be done in several ways. Manufacturers can't risk investing large amounts of money into the production of a product that's not had adequate design, modeling, testing, prototyping and evaluation. So that's where the iterative design comes into play. So if I'm designing a product for somebody, I need to make sure before I make it, that it's had a lot of testing to see whether it meets their needs. I've prototyped it, so I've made models of it to see if it's gonna work, to see if it could be any better. Um, and all of that, maybe over and over again, maybe two or three times before I get to the final thing and make it and evaluate it, okay? So that is basically what we mean by iterative design. It doesn't mean that you make one design, develop it, and then that's it, okay? So, investigations of the context then, strand one. So, this is the first section that we're starting on. So, this is where we're starting to think about what work I'm actually asking you to do um, for the week ahead. So, the first section is called investigations of context. Now, some of you, if you did the work that I've set previously, um, you'll notice this is quite similar. The reason that I did that was to give you a little bit of a practice before we started this real thing, okay? So investigations of context is where you are considering one of the contexts that the exam board have given us and you're thinking of any problems that could be associated with that, okay? So the reason that you're doing that is so that you can come up with a suitable problem that you're gonna try and solve with the product as a designer. So eventually you will come up with a, a design problem, um, but for the time being, you are just doing some research to get you to that point. So one of the ways that we can do that to start off with is a spider diagram. 
So the first step is to do a spider diagram using the headings who, what, where, why, and how. Um, so I'm going to explain those on the next page and then give you an example as well. So there will be three contexts to choose from, like I've mentioned here previously. Now, all I want you to do is read the three contexts at first. Just read them, and then I want you to pick the two that are your favourite, okay? You're only going to go ahead with one eventually, but for this exercise, I want you to pick two of them. So pick the two that you think you can think the most things for, you find the most interesting, you might have somebody at home or somebody that you know that you can think of that has a great interest in that. Um, so pick the two that are going to be the easiest for you. So you're going to produce a spider diagram for both of the contexts. So whichever two you pick, you are doing one spider diagram for one of them and another spider diagram for the other, the other one. So they need to be on separate pieces of paper. So you'll see in a minute why they need to be on separate pieces of paper because of the level of detail. So you are thinking about the following things on this page. So once you've read that context, you are thinking, who could this context affect? What type of person? The age of them, the gender, is it male, female? Is it anybody you know specifically? Who could be a potential primary user? So when I say primary user, that's the person that the product is going to be designed for. It's your, your chosen person that I've mentioned before. Um, who could be stakeholders? Now, this was in some of the work that I set before for you. Um, stakeholders is anybody that has an interest in that product other than the primary user. So if I was making a toy for a four-year-old child, then a stakeholder might be the manufacturer. It would be the toy shops. It might be nursery groups. It might be play groups. It might be primary schools. Okay. So anybody else that has any sort of interest in that product. So what? What problems can you think of to do with that context and what sorts of things could solve them? Where, where would this be a problem? So which locations? So you're thinking about all the different places that that particular thing could cause an issue. Why is it a problem? You need to make sure you go into detail on this. So why, why is there a problem associated with that? And then how would it affect people? How could you help and how could you make it? Now, I'm not asking you at this point to come up with an idea for a product because it's too early for that. Um, I'm not asking you to say, oh, I'm going to make it using lap joints or, or finger joints or anything. That is too much detail. You're not thinking about that right now. All you're thinking about is how that problem would affect people and potential ideas for you to be able to solve it. Not a specific product, but just an idea. So once you've finished, you need to photograph each spider diagram. Now, you can either send me a photograph or if you've got a smartphone, there is a very, very good app called Cam Scanner. So C-A-M-S-C-A-N-N-E-R. So Cam Scanner. Um, that's really good. It will take a photograph of your work just as normal and then it will turn it into a scan and you can email me, it to me. And it's just a lot clearer, a lot better to see. And we can put it then easily on a PowerPoint when you get back to school. So... These are your three contextual challenges, okay? Now, moving the, um, I'm not sure whether this camera thing is moving for you guys as well, but I'm just moving it around so that you can see. So the contextual challenges, these have been created by the exam board. We can't change them. You can't change the wording. They have to stay exactly the same. So number one, multi-purpose spaces. Working from home is becoming more common in modern society. Explore the role design can play in creating products that make multi-purpose spaces as efficient as possible for both living and working. So obviously this one relates quite a lot to the current situation. There's an awful lot of people working at home. You've probably got people in your home that are doing their, their normal day-to-day -day job, but doing it remotely. Um, so this would be quite an interesting one at the moment to explore. There's probably quite a lot of ideas for it right now. Um, but that is entirely up to you. So that's one of your three. The second one is everyday activities. So access to everyday activities can be an issue for people with limited movement, including older people. Explore the role design can play in extending opportunities for people who struggle with everyday activities. OK, so that one, again, there's quite a lot of scope with that one. So you are thinking about it, it could literally be anything. So what it mentions, particularly older people. So how easy is it for an older person to make the tea for example 
to get up and get a TV remote, to sit down, to walk up the stairs, to go outside. So everyday things that most people take for granted, um, you are exploring the role that design could play in making the opportunities better for those sorts of people. So the last one, which I imagine will appeal to quite a lot of people, is music. So music can be an enjoyable social and cultural experience that does not only focus on the playing of an instrument. Explore the role design can play in enhancing the experiences for any of the stakeholders involved. Okay, so that is quite an open one. So music. So it's not talking about playing a musical instrument as such, but it's it's thinking about how um, design could help ec enhance musical experiences for anybody that uses it. Okay. Right. So this is an example of the level of detail that you need to be aiming towards for a spider diagram. So when we say a spider diagram, we're not talking about the context in the middle and five words around the outside. You are year 10 and it's a GCSE. So unfortunately, we are expecting this sort of level of information on the page. So when you do your spider diagrams, the first thing to note is you need to copy down the full context in the center. So this one isn't one of those three. This is one of the older ones from last year. So this one is for countryside. So I've put countryside and then I've copied the actual full wording of the context underneath. So exploring the countryside and getting closer to nature and wildlife can have beneficial effects on a person's health and well-being. Explore ways that design can enhance the experience of people, young or old, when spending time enjoying the countryside. So that was the context that I based this on um, from last year. So around the outside, you can see that I've got my different sections. So I've got um, who, I've got what, where, why, and how. So for my who section then, who section here, I'm basically thinking of as many people as I possibly can that would have association with this so that they would be involved in it. So I've got rock class cyclists, Edinburgh students, scouts, campers, walkers, hikers, guides, photographers, young children, and enthusiasts, birders, families, dog walkers. So lots and lots of different people. Sorry about that. Lots and lots of different people that could potentially be involved with this context. So they would all at some point have something to do with the countryside. Okay. So it doesn't matter if you think it's right or wrong, you are putting down anything in your head that you can think of, okay? Right, so the next one then, what? So I'm thinking about what sort of issues there might be, so not specifically, just, just a few ideas um, about associated with the countryside. So I've got things like storage for food. So if somebody's going camping, how easy is it to store food and keep things cold, keep things hot? Security, if I'm on a long walk and I want to go into a cafe or I want to go and use some public toilets or anything like that, what do I do with my bags? How do I ensure that they're not getting stolen? Okay. Um, obviously, bike, bike cycling, things like that. Yes, we've got bike locks. What if there's nothing to chain the bike to? How am I keeping my bike secure if I'm camping or walking or whatever else? Um, different terrains. So I could set out on a nice sunny walk and it might absolutely throw it down and then be really, really muddy and slippy underfoot. My trainers that I had on or my walking boots that I had on for dry weather might not be very suitable for wet weather. So is there something that I could do to maybe solve that problem without having to carry an extra pair of shoes? An adaptable coat, so if you were, obviously that would be more down the textiles line, um, but is there something I could make that could adapt my clothing? Um, what could I do for light? Yes, we've got standard torches. Is there anything I could do to incorporate it into something else? Um, boredom in children, maybe if you've got people going on a walk as a family and they've got younger children that are used to being sat at home playing on Xboxes, things like that, maybe that's an issue. Maybe that's a problem that I might want to look at solving. Okay, so it doesn't necessarily have to be an emergency. It doesn't have to be a life-changing problem as such. Um, but you're trying to highlight areas that could potentially be an issue, okay? So where, um, obviously we've mentioned the, the main picture is countryside. This one's a little bit difficult because it is almost a location anyway. Um, but if you thought about one such as music, 
then that's not giving you a location. So you're thinking then about all the different places that music could um, have any sort of relevance. So it could be um, at home, in a bedroom, it could be in a living room, it could be in a garden, it could be a swimming pool, it could be while people at the gym, it could be pubs, it could be whatever. So there's loads and loads of things for that one um, and others besides. Um, so you're thinking about all the different places that this could have an impact or it could have any relevance. Um, why? So that's really how I'm looking at some of the issues in a little bit more detail. So I'm suggesting some problems. So security, I already mentioned before, could be an issue when camping or leaving a bike somewhere. There's nowhere particularly secure. Um, maybe if I'm taking a dog on a long walk, how could I provide comfort, food and water without carrying a mass load of bags, loads of extra luggage? Weather can change quickly. No alternative clothes or footwear without carrying a lot again. Um, boredom from younger children when they're on lengthy walks could a fun product be designed to help them interact with nature so I've not said what specific product I'm just sort of thinking of ideas of something I could do to try and alleviate that problem so then how so I'm starting to think more here about what I could do so um, discomfort over longer periods personal loss of belongings more difficult to walk so this is how it's affecting that person and what I could do. So obviously, if I've got to carry lots of extra things, that might cause discomfort, again, with the weather and things like that as well, discomfort for the person that's actually on, on the walk or in the countryside. Um, so could I make something that's got an extra storage compartment? Could I make something that has additional light built into it? Could I design a locking mechanism for bikes or bags that could fit on a fence post? or that didn't need a post at all that I could put into the ground? Um, could I design a game or a book or something similar to keep children engaged so that while they're going around, they've got something else to occupy them that brings them into what they're doing as well? Could I have a container that folds and stores extra things so it can be attached to a rucksack? Okay, could I do a some sort of personal security device so that if something is being stolen or damaged or... I'm on my own at night, I'm camping or whatever, could I do something that make me feel a bit more secure? So you are thinking about all of the different possibilities to do with that context. There is no right or wrong answer. Literally anything that comes into your head to do with that will fit somewhere on that spider diagram. Even if you put it outside of the, the little categories, that's quite okay, happy with that. But you need to be doing it as, in as much detail as possible. So I know a few people did return me their mind maps from the practice pieces of work. Um, they, they were good. They were a good start, but they do need to be a lot more detailed for the, for the proper um, NEA. Okay? So this one is an example of what you are aiming towards. So you are going to have two of these. Okay, so one for one context, one for the other. So remember, there are three contexts. You are picking a two that you think think are going to be the most accessible to you that you're going to find the easiest or you're the most interested in and then you're doing a spider diagram for each one of them okay when you've done it you need to take a picture or you need to scan it if you're using the cam scanner app that I spoke to you about or if you've got a scanner at home on your printer you can do it that way as well and then make sure you send it to me so that I can have a look over it and I can tick you off on my tracking sheet so that I know that you've done it um, and you're ready to move on next week okay ideally we need to try and keep up with this work because it is always quite difficult um, to fit in practical work. And obviously at the moment, we don't know what's going to happen with when we're back in school full time and things like that. So it is even more important than usual, probably, um, for you to make sure you don't fall behind with this. Um, so again, if you've got any issues at all, then please make sure that you email me or phone school so that I can get a message back to you. I will be calling everybody over the next couple of days just to make sure that you've seen this, you can access it um, and that your parents know that it's on here and that they can see it too and know that your real GCSE work has started. Okay. Um, so on Show My Homework, I will attach this PowerPoint so that you can open it. Um, and then I will also provide a link for this video um, but that may be a day or so later, depending on when it uploads. Okay. Um, so I hope you all get okay with that. Please make sure you let me know if you have any problems. And I look forward to seeing your spider diagrams. Okay, thank you.